It's a great honor to be here, of course, to celebrate Francesco, and it's a great honor to be here in this panel with this uh, highly distinguished panelist. So in my remarks today, I want to um, connect the discussion about debt and low interest rates to what are desirable fiscal rules, uh, uh, especially thinking over this business cycle. And uh, I'll go back more specifically about the European proposals for fiscal rules later if there is time. But more generally, what I want to ask is not if should we now, should Italy now or European countries now do expansion in fiscal policy, because unfortunately the outlook of these countries, Italy and many other European countries, now is very weak and uh, the chance of a recession is very, is very high. So I agree uh, with Olivier and, and with Alberto. Right now it's a moment for expansionary policies both monetary and fiscal, as much as we can. But the question is more about if you want to design fiscal rules for more the medium run, so if you want to think about a situation where plausibly the outlook is going to be a little bit healthier, uh, what should the, uh, uh, the quality, the, what should the attribute of a fiscal rule have? And, uh, and so I'm thinking about, for example, Italy two or three years ago, where things were not that good, but were a little better than now, for example. And uh, the, 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 main, uh, the main takeaway that I want to give you is that actually I still believe that even in an environment with low interest rate, uh, counter-cyclical fiscal rules are important. So there is an argument that can be made and that has been made that uh, when interest rates are low, because uh, there is no much room for monetary policy, uh, it's good to have fiscal expansions even in booms, in healthy periods, because there, this generates a pressure upward on interest rates. And so if interest, ra interest rates are, ro are low, this uh, gives more room to monetary policy in case a recession hits. And, uh, and this is a, a valid argument, but there is a limitation, I think, that even if fiscal space right now is a little uh, more larger because interest rates are low, there is still some limit to how much debt can increase because uh, if interest rate keep going, if debt keep going up, interest rates are going to grow, and at some point, uh, it's going to uh, become higher than the growth rate of the country. So, in this perspective, there is some limit, some limit to fiscal space. I think it's important uh, also uh, to be responsible and save some fiscal space. Uh, for the recession when it comes, especially because you want to do fiscal expansions in the moment in which uh, uh, you really need it. And it's exactly because interest rates are low and monetary policy may be not effective, uh, you may need to do a lot of fiscal expansion in the, moment, in the moments of, of difficulty right, right now or, uh, or like in the past. Um, so if you, if you want to do that, you have to save some bullets uh, even if it uh, may be a little costly, uh, but you want to save some bullets to avoid to, do to, do, to be much more contractionary in the moment in which it's more painful, like in 2011, for example. And so, the main, the, so of course, if you could increase interest rate a lot with a fiscal expansion in a boom, then I would uh, be all for it. But my worry is that what really push up interest rate is not the stock of that, but it's more the default. So if we could keep increasing defaults or the increase in debt, then there would be high pressure upward on interest rate. But if we do some expansionary fiscal uh, 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 policy and then the stock of debt is higher, uh, and then we don't keep increasing def deficits, uh, sorry, I said default time and deficits, if we keep in the increased deficits, uh, uh, if we don't do that, then interest rates are gonna go down slowly. Uh, still, why? Because in the moment in which you run a deficit and you inject liquidity in the system, then people have, uh, uh, have more bonds, have more liquidity, even people that need it, and so this means that uh, it's going to be powerful. But after a while, a bond starts exchange hands, and they will end up in the hands of the, of the consumers who have highest marginal propensity to save. So the pressure on interest rate is going to be lower at some point. Still, interest rates are going to be higher with a higher level of stock, of debt, but I don't think by much. So for these reasons, I think that uh, the, effect, uh, the beneficial, uh, beneficial effect of a fiscal expansion in a boom on the interest rate is not so large. And so I think it's important uh, uh, to save space uh, 
for a country like Italy uh, in the moment of, uh, uh, of a difficulty like, like now to be able to do uh, more ex fiscal, uh, fiscal expansions and inject liquidity in the hands of the people that need it at, at that moment. Of course, uh, um, I, I agree that uh, coordinated uh, fiscal policy at the euro level would help uh, alleviate the need for, for fiscal space. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, we are not there yet. And so uh, right now, I think it, it's still important that uh, uh, the countries have, have some room uh, for the bad moments to come. So let me say just one last thing now, and, and then uh, uh, we'll talk more later. But uh, one limitation to my argument is that uh, monetary policy is always faster to act than fiscal policy. And so, I mean, maybe just a little bit of a higher interest rate may be beneficial uh, for, the, for the monetary policy to be more powerful. So in that respect, I think it is important when you think about fiscal rules uh, to strengthen the automatic stabilizers as that makes fiscal policy also more uh, um, faster Fast, faster to, to act, um, and, and I, I would push in that, in that direction also the, the design of fiscal rules for Europe. Okay, thank you very much. Well, that starts us on the fiscal rules topic that I think we will have more on in a little while. Uh, but we'll turn now to Stanley Fisher. Stan. Thanks uh, very much.